Blue Ridge Parkway is America's favorite journey. Of the nearly 400 special places in our national park system, none is more popular or more visited. This year is the parkway's 75th birthday. It is more than the celebration of a road. It is the celebration of a place that connects people to the mountains and to each other. The parkway isn't really about pavement. It's about people. It's a totally different world up here. I mean, you're, you're, you just feel like you're above everything else. People like Ann and Peter O'Leary and their children, Aaron and AJ. Aaron, look at the view over here. The fog is slowly going away. The O'Learys visit the parkway several times a year. You know, stop and, and look at the overlooks. Uh, picture taking. Picture taking. The bird's eye view, isn't it? It pretty much looks nothing like uh, the woods behind our house. I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. You do feel like you've kind of left everything behind. It's just good to be able to see how beautiful nature really is. And you're almost taking a step back in time. We have lots of interesting conversations about history and nature, and um, I think it bonds us more as a family. It's a different pace. I mean, it's just, just a different pace than the normal, you know, drive as fast as you can to get there. On two wheels, too. I like riding the parkway because it is so relaxing. It may be one of the most phenomenal roadways in the whole world, actually. It certainly is in this country. Bill Kanigi shares this journey through his company. It takes people on motorcycle tours on the parkway. We've had from South America, Switzerland, Germany, England. I've heard people on our tours go, you can just see they're going, they're pointing there going, ooh, look at that. And then they go, ooh, look at that. It always exceeds their expectations when they're riding. The same is true on bicycles too. Man, what a gorgeous day. You're in nature. I mean, you listen to the birds, you see all kinds of critters while you're riding. It's just a beautiful experience. Okay, bull gap. Claudia and Mike Nix are among thousands who pedal the parkway. 3,100 feet. Riding along the, the ridges of the mountains, I think a lot of people want to come and see that and experience that. Isn't that pretty? And it's cheaper than a psychiatrist. It's really, I mean, for me, riding is part of my mental release. That was nice. Yeah. You really get to be part of the environment when you're riding the bike. I think we go past the log. That little bend, yeah, I see the bend. Sharon McCarthy and Danny Bernstein use the parkway to get even closer to the environment by hiking its many trails. I like being up high, up the higher elevations. Oh, lots more trout lilies there. Okay. You can walk um, five minutes down a trail and feel like you're in the back country. Sharon and Danny are on the Mountains to Sea Trail. It parallels and crisscrosses the parkway along most of its North Carolina route. You can actually park almost any place and start walking it, whether you're walking two miles or walking like we did today, 13 and a half miles. It's up to you. And you can get a feel for what walking at 5,500 feet is like. Danny and Sharon, Mike and Claudia, Bill and the O'Learys are among the 17 million people who visit the parkway every year. People love coming here with their families. Memories are made here. Relationships are developed here. It is a place that people bring their families back time and time again, and one generation to the next. And all of those people generate money. From the book Danny wrote about hiking along the Blue Ridge Parkway, 
to the bicycle shop that Mike and Claudia own just off the parkway in Asheville. Have you ever been at the Sam's Camp? It's a tremendous boost to our industry. To Bill Kanigi's motorcycle tour company too. The Blue Ridge Parkway is really the magnet of the whole thing. A magnet that draws people to the O'Leary's Outfitters store a half hour off the parkway in Chimney Rock. I'll take those, sir. It's a big advantage to us to be located that close to the parkway, absolutely. Someone helping you? It's an even bigger advantage for the Switzerland Cafe, which is just a few hundred feet off the parkway. It's a large percentage of our business. About 65 percent. When the parkway is closed, our traffic goes down considerably. That kind of traffic generates more than $2 billion a year for businesses along the parkway. And that was really the point in the first place. Next, the price of that progress. They took a big, a big wide space of our land here. The Blue Ridge Parkway may be America's favorite journey, but early on, there were bumps in the road. Like most major road projects, there was conflict, controversy, and delay. That's where I was born, right here. Jerry Wolf is a Cherokee elder. He was just a teenager when the government took his family's home for the Blue Ridge Parkway in the late 1930s. They had to take it down on account of the road going right through the house. It was the price of progress as roads were being built all over the country to handle the new wave of automobile traffic. And some of those were aimed at tourists and getting people traveling and promoting tourism in different areas. After a visit to Skyline Drive in the new Shenandoah National Park, President Roosevelt proposed a similar road connecting it to the new Great Smoky Mountain National Park. It was part of Franklin Roosevelt's set of programs to bring uh, big public works projects that would cause material to be bought, that would stimulate the economy that way, and that would put people to work. And boost tourism in mountain communities along the route. In Asheville, city leaders were looking for ways to revive a once thriving tourism industry decimated by the Depression. They were really the ones that were the most excited about what the Parkway was going to do for tourism. And they were really the ones most poised and likely to benefit if the Parkway came past their city. But a committee appointed by Interior Secretary Harold Ickes recommended a route that took the Parkway north into Tennessee, bypassing Asheville. That sent North Carolinians into a complete tizzy. Josephus Daniels led a delegation to Washington Daniels was the owner of the Raleigh News and Observer, had a summer home near Asheville, and was a personal friend of President Roosevelt's. And they really made the case that the North Carolina route was more scenic, that they were about to make a terrible mistake to put this thing in Tennessee, plus how could they kill an existing city and its industry? In 1934, Secretary Ickes overruled his own committee and selected the Asheville route. State officials were charged with acquiring land. And they came in to use their power of eminent domain to take the land for this public purpose of the park. The parkway needed 800 to 1,000 feet of right-of-way to help protect its scenic views. A normal highway at that time would have had about 60 feet of right-of-way, so this is many times as much land. The highway would also be closed to commercial traffic, preventing farmers from using it to haul produce and other goods. Landowners got upset by the very things that make the parkway wonderful for travelers. Low prices for their land upset landowners too. But in September of 1935, government contractors began construction. It's blast and dump, blast and move, and always being very careful not to make such a scar that couldn't be healed back by the CC boys. The CCC was FDR's Civilian Conservation Corps. It was one of his New Deal programs to put unemployed young men to work. Harley Jolly was among them. Wherever the big bulldozers went by and made the rough, the CC boys came by and eased the slope, put in the rotor and all the other items, and put in the, the mile post. 
World War II stalled parkway construction. The project languished until the mid-50s when there was new federal funding to upgrade the national parks. By 1968, all but a seven-mile stretch of the parkway around Grandfather Mountain was complete. The Park Service's proposed route was just 500 feet below the summit. Grandfather Mountain's owner, Hugh Morton, used his political connections to fight it. He even held a live debate with the head of the National Park Service on WRL tv And ultimately, uh, the Park Service sort of blinked, in a way, and agreed to a route about 500 feet lower on the mountain between 221 and the preferred uh, higher route. Funding and engineering issues delayed completion of that seven mile stretch until 1987. It included the iconic Linco Viaduct, a suspended quarter mile curve to circumvent a boulder field on the mountain. And the end result was one of the most beautiful pieces on the parkway, one of the most fascinating pieces of the parkway, and a gigantic engineering accomplishment. <laughs> From Rockfish Gap, Virginia, the parkway meanders 469 miles, climbing from 600 feet at the James River to more than 6,000 feet at North Carolina's Richland Balsam. Along the way, it passes through 26 tunnels and by more than 200 overlooks and parking areas and through some of the most biologically diverse land in North America before winding down into Cherokee. See, they took these cabins away because the road had to go right through the house there. Jerry Wolf says his tribe fought the parkway in the beginning. They were negative, very negative about it. But the Cherokees ultimately supported the parkway, counting on the tourists it brings them today. And when they come off the uh, parkway, they, uh, most of them will go to Cherokee and then there they will shop. My daddy's land was around four, maybe 500 acres. The government gave oh, Jerry's father oh, another piece of land in Cherokee for the land it took for the parkway and built him a house there where Jerry lives today. Now Jerry travels the parkway to pick blueberries and enjoy the views. It just gives you a great feeling, it gives me a great feeling to see all that. Next, roadblocks in the parkway's future. We are severely short-staffed. We're not able to do a lot of the, the stuff that, uh, that does involve safety for us and for the visitors. Most people traveling it are probably unaware of the monumental effort needed to maintain the parkway. The Park Service says limited funds are limiting its ability to protect this national resource. On a big work day, we'll have probably about 10, 12 people out working. Gloria and Carrie Hilton are volunteers with a group called Friends of the Blue Ridge Parkway. We want to help the parkway to preserve it, and we're kind of working toward that end. The Hiltons help maintain buildings, repair fences, clean campgrounds and picnic areas, and paint mileposts. Anything they ask us to do, we'll try. The Parkway's local facilities manager appreciates the help. Any of the, the chores that they do, that really frees up my folks, and that's extremely important right now. That's because Baker has lost so much staff over the last 20 years he can no longer keep up with routine maintenance. So consequently, the views from the parkway have been impacted. Uh, many of the overlooks and vistas have not been cut on a timely basis like we used to cut them. Um, the developed areas, they just don't look as neat and clean as they have in years past. The superintendent says the parkway has lost about a third of its total staff. Fewer resources makes it certainly more difficult for us to meet our fundamental mission. There's no doubt about that. A lack of routine maintenance can lead to rock slides like this one. Funding shortages, delay repairs, and lengthen closures. Some of our core mission um, we're not able to get to in the same kind of time frames that we've had in the past. 
Potholes are being patched on this section around Orchard Gap to make do until funding is available for the repaving that's needed. That section was last paved about 30 years ago. A shortage of rangers has led to more vandalism and concerns about public safety. Over here by the window, all right. And Kernahan says tourists are noticing the problems. We get complaints from uh, our customers that they went into a visitor center and it was closed or that the sign was wrong, the signage was incorrect or, uh, you know, that it just, they went down a trail and they had to climb over a tree because the maintenance just wasn't there. Or worse yet, people can't access the parkway at all because of long closures for maintenance and repairs. And then our keech today is ham, roasted red peppers and blue cheese. Those closures cripple Kernahan's business. You have to understand the ripple effect. and. Uh, and I think it's quite serious and, and it should be taken seriously. The parkway got $20 million in economic stimulus money for road repairs and is supposed to get another $70 million in federal highway funds. But that doesn't even cover half of its $200 million road maintenance backlog. And it doesn't address the parkway's chronic staffing and maintenance needs. The parkway also needs funds to buy land that will protect scenic views from encroaching development. It is especially important that we protect this resource. Volunteers like Gloria and Carrie Hilton agree and do whatever they can to help. We think we do a lot, but I'm sure we're only a little, little bitty drop in the butt bucket. Next, who will work to fill that bucket in the years to come? Parkway's probably been around for a while. How old do you think it is? To learn more about the Blue Ridge Parkway, visit WREL.com and click News, then Documentaries. It will be up to our children to make sure the Blue Ridge Parkway is preserved and protected for the next 75 years. Some say we should share the journey with our children to make sure they share it with their children. That mountain right there is called Jackson's Knob, and that's on the crest or the top of the Blue Ridge. Bill Carson preserves the past by passing it on. And on the 29th of September, the Army came marching right down this road here. Bill runs a nonprofit preservation project at the Orchard at Alta Pass. It's an apple orchard on the parkway near Spruce Pine. We found a whole lot of things here, cultural and natural, that needed to be preserved. One more time, here we go. Things like mountain music, storytelling, and simple living. <laughs> We call it saving the good stuff. You can see the Blue Ridge Parkway through the trees over here. Bill calls the parkway a window into some of that good stuff. We get uh, 60,000 people a year through here, largely off the parkway. People that come through and have heard about us and stop and, and see. And Alta means high. For Bill, so, those are 60,000 teachable moments. So they called it Alta Pass, High Pass. Chances to expose people, and especially children, to mountain history, culture, and nature. Yeah, you mentioned a big bird. One of the things that we've noticed is that young people are not connected uh, with our national parks in the same way they were in the past. Oh, muskrat, yay, you got it. This is a muskrat. Francis says only about 12% of parkway visitors are children. Now, there's no question that those kids are really going to be uh, the parkway's future. The Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation raises a half million dollars a year from sales of its specialized license plates to support the parkway. It helps fund educational outreach programs for children. So what we're trying to do is to, you know, instill those values of stewardship, uh, not only with living adults, but uh, more particularly with children. I'm going to tell you about the flood of 1916. If we're going to save the good stuff, it has to be the kids that we, uh, that we attract to saving the good stuff here. Let's go up and check this sign out. Kids like A.J. and Aaron O'Leary, who look through the parkway's window and see a world worth saving. We'll be getting the flowers pretty soon. You want to go on and hike? I'd like it to stay the same as it is. Like, 
so I can make new memories with my family when I come up here and be remembering the memories I made with my parents. Wow, let's check this view out. The world is a lot smaller than it used to be, you know. So, I mean, I guess it, it would be nice to have this place preserved.